Hi, in this video I would like to introduce you to my Affinity Photo Macro designed to invert color negative scans. It comes in two versions, one regular version that just inverts the colors, and another version that takes advantage of an infrared scan to remove any dust and scratches. Most dedicated film scanners let you scan the infrared channel, but I wasn't happy with the built-in dust removal in Silverfast, and if you like scanning in RAW anyway, uh, then using the infrared channel can be a real pain. So this macro takes care of all that and will automatically remove any dust and scratches that it can detect. First, I will quickly demonstrate how to use the regular version and then we will get into the version that utilizes the infrared channel. So let's open up the file that you want to edit, which is this going to be a raw TIFF file. And all you have to do is open up Signin's film inversion and hit the button. There we go. Now you have some parameters here that you can do to tweak the image to your liking. The basic inversion has been done. Uh, some of the settings have already been preset. For example, I have found that uh, I prefer it when the hue has been changed a little bit uh, and the saturation a little bit in the red channel. But all of that is up to you and you can go ahead and tweak all these parameters that I've already selected here. And you can obviously go ahead and uh, select whatever extra adjustments you want to make and use them before exporting your final picture. If there is one setting that you are always changing, for example, you always want the saturation of the blue to be boosted because you're not happy with uh, how the blue tones look, then you can go ahead and edit my macro and you can go to the adjustment where I set the huge saturation luminance adjustment and go to the parameters and then find the blue saturation and just boost it up. And then you can go ahead and save the macro as a new version. Uh, you can change the name and then you will have a macro that also boosts the blue and you don't have to do that step every time you are editing a picture. Now I will show you how to use the infrared version. Um, for example, here you can see some scratches and some dust that are still in the image. And we will go ahead and fix those now if you have a printer that allows you to scan with infrared. So for example, if you are using Silverfast, that allows you to scan with the option selected IHDR 64-bit. That will be a raw scan that also includes the infrared channel. You have to save the file as a TIFF file when you're doing that because DNG files can't include multiple layers, uh, only TIFF files can. So if you select DNG while doing that, you're basically not doing anything with the infrared channel as far as I am aware of. Um, but if you save it as a TIFF file, then embedded in this TIFF file will be two different layers. One that just contains the regular scan and one that contains the infrared scan. Uh, if you are in Mac, uh, I have made a workflow that allows you to split the TIFF file onto the two different layers. To install this workflow, you just have to double click it and hit install. And then once you select a TIFF file, you can right click on it and just select split TIFF in the menu right here. It's a very simple script. You can see it right here if you're curious. Um, it just finds the file that you, are, that you have selected and then uses the built-in Unix command TIFF split to split it up into two files that contain the same name uh, and just append um, a differentiator at the end. So for example, if we want to use it on this file, we can just hit split TIFF and we get two files with the same name except for uh, AAA at the end, which is just the regular scan and AAB, which is the infrared scan. So let's say we want to edit this picture. We will open the AAA version first, and then we can drag the infrared scan on top of it. Just drag anywhere on top of the image right here. There we go. And then all we have to do is open up Signin's film inversion with IR and then we can just select invert with auto dust selection and wait for it to load. There we go. 
So it did uh, the same inversion that gets done in the regular version and it removed all dust that it could detect in the image using the infrared channel. For example, if I turn on the infrared channel right here, we can see that there was some dust and scratches up here as well as down here. And um, if we check out that spot on the final image, no dust and uh, it's basically indetectable that any modification was done in those areas. Um, if you spot some tiny little dust specks that you're not happy with, you can go ahead and manually remove them by hitting J on your keyboard or the selecting the in painting brush tool and you can just hit those areas and paint over them and the dust will practically disappear as if it were magic. However, if there is lots of dust that somehow wasn't detected, um, then we can do some manual dust selection, which is a two-step process and is a little bit more manual than the automatic version, but it could uh, be useful to you. Okay, so now we just have the two files again, and we can select the first step of the manual dust selection. All right. So then we have to open up the infrared layer right here and select the levels adjustment by double clicking it and then we can drag the white level down until all we see are, is, is the dust of the infrared scan. So if I set it to 77% you can still see lots of the image uh, which we don't want. We want to make sure that only the dust is visible. Alright 73% looks about right. Okay, so now that we have set the white level so that we only see the dust, we are, are going to rasterize this layer so that uh, the levels adjustment gets collapsed into it and we just get a pure pixel layer. And then we're going to go to select, select sampled color right here. And then we can change the tolerance to try to get as much of the dust selected as possible without getting any of the image selected. As you can see, if I go to 0%, then uh, some of the image gets selected, which we don't want. So let's push that up until it's pretty much just dust that's being selected. So 3% seems to work. There, Then we can go ahead and hit apply. And then you can hit step two. And there we go. Um, hopefully a bit more of the dust has been selected now that we have uh, manually checked to make sure that all the dust is selected um, and we can be pretty happy with the results then. In this image uh, to finish it off I would probably uh, change some of the white balance, um, get some of that green out of the image, change the red hue a little bit, get the yellow out of the skin tone, get a little bit more warm, and then I'd probably like to boost the saturation of the blue to get the sky to pop. And there we go. And now that I've edited the image, uh, I can go ahead and just export it as a JPEG or a PNG or whatever you like to save your images as. And that's pretty much all it is. Um, I hope this macro is useful to you. Um, I wasn't able to find anything that did anything similar, even the fancy plugins like uh, Negative Lab Pro for Lightroom, uh, which costs $100, uh, doesn't seem to have any option for uh, doing any dust removal, which I found to be pretty frustrating. Um, and I am pretty happy with uh, how this macro turned out. So I hope you are able to find some use in it. And um, if you have any questions, just leave them below, or any issues, just leave them on the GitHub. And thanks for watching.